Google and Apple have your family tracked. Here's why a Google phone is your only weapon against that. This is Freddie Untracked. Most phones are tracking machines. Every app, every search, every swipe, all building that profile that follows your child into adulthood. A Trinity College study found that even when you opt out, iPhones send data to Apple every four and a half minutes. Serial numbers, SIM details, Safari URLs, all logged. An Android is 20 times worse. Google doesn't need to hear your calls to invade your privacy. It's able to log who you called, where you were, and for how long you spoke. Think about that. That's enough to map your entire life. It's all pure advertising gold. And this was always the plan. When the iPhone launched, Apple got something unprecedented, a direct behavioral feed from millions of pocket computers. While Google couldn't catch up on hardware, so it made Android free. Samsung, Huawei, anyone could use it, no licensing fee. Why? Because it gave Google access to 80% of mobile phone users worldwide. Mobiles aren't a tool for you, they're extraction devices for big tech. So what do you do? Well, you could explore some of the alternative options. You could get a light phone, great for digital detox, probably not that good for family coordination. Or if you want a bit of a throwback, you could try a Nokia 3310. There's a re-release out now. What do I use? Well, I use Graphene OS. This is sort of the privacy gold standard and much revered in privacy communities. It's basically Android with all the backend spyware ripped out of it. That means most of the apps work fine, but all the data harvesting has been cut. And for parents, you can also lock down kids' access as you like. Now here's the ironic part. You will need to get a Google Pixel phone to be able to run it. I know it sounds weird and we're trying to stop ourselves from using big tech, but for me, the hardware was never the problem. It was the invasive back end of it all. And Graphene OS have said recently that they've partnered with a mobile phone manufacturer uh, to pre-install their OS on new devices, but that is yet to be revealed when that will come. For now, you don't have to wait. You can easily pick up a secondhand Google Pixel device. I'm using a Pixel 9, but you can get a Pixel 6a for around 150 pounds secondhand. Uh, it still gets all the security updates and will work for some time. It is important to note that the latest model of Google Pixel, Google Pixel 10, cannot run Graphene OS, and it's unclear if future models will also be able to. Uh, stick to unlocked pixels if you can, and don't go lower than a six. Graphene OS also has a very clever function where it isolates each app in its own container. This is called sandboxing. This means apps can't see outside of their own container. For example, Instagram can't see what's in your banking app and TikTok can't read your contacts unless you explicitly allow it. This is a major source of data leaking on other phones. You can still run Google Play apps if you need them. Graphene OS lets you install Google Play services in one of those sandboxes. So banking apps, Uber, whatever you need, they all work, but Google doesn't get root access to your entire phone. To install Graphene OS, you basically have to enable developer options on the Pixel. You do this in the settings. Then you plug your device into a computer and follow the instructions from the Graphene website. If you are nervous about giving your child full access to a smartphone, the world of apps and the internet, unrestricted, then you could set up restricted profiles in the phone itself. It works like this. Graphene OS essentially lets you create separate profiles like having multiple phones in one device. So profile one could be you, that has the full control, and profile two, that could be your child with restricted access. Uh, you create this by going into the settings, into system, multiple users, add a user, and then create a restricted profile. Um, you can turn off access to settings so they can't install apps or change permissions or bypass any of your rules. You can also, from your main profile, install the apps on their profile for them. So signal, yes, TikTok, no. You control permissions, location, camera, contacts. That's your call. To switch profiles, it's pretty easy. You just swipe down at the top. You tap the user icon and switch profiles. One minor hitch, the phone will always boot into the owner profile, so you'll need to unlock it for them after a restart. You don't need to do this, but there's an option there if you want to. I would also suggest for peace of mind, having things like banking apps in a separate profile under a separate pin. Want to go deeper into privacy on the phone, you can run a VPN at all times like Proton or Molvad. 
You could switch your DNS to Next DNS or Quad9. I covered that a bit in my Smart TV episode. Now I'm gonna be real, setting this phone up is an iPhone plug and play easy. It will take a couple of hours and a bit of tech confidence in doing it, but I think the trade-off is well worth it. And this phone isn't about a parent spying on their kids or keeping tabs on them at all times. Graphene OS has no screen time reports or tracking, that's kind of the point. You're not monitoring them, you're protecting them from companies that want to monetize them. Finally, remember, de-googling is a process. It's not something that happens overnight. And if it all does seem quite complicated and a lot to work through, in my next episode, I'll be releasing my family privacy checklist. So you'll be able to go through this step by step and I'll be going through that checklist in future videos. That's it from me. Please hit that subscribe button for more simple tips to enhance your family's digital privacy.